morning. All right. It is so wonderful to be here with all of you. I am humbled by the energy and the idealism that is in this hall. And I'm also excited to say that my family's here, my wife Vanessa and my children Mirabelle and Reese. And Asher, Monique's son, they're the reason we're here. I know firsthand the importance of our cause because I'm a son of immigrants and a product of the American dream. My father emigrated from Iran. He left a country of dictatorship in search of a country of freedom and democracy. Dad became a doctor, and he spent his life healing and saving lives. On my Italian mother's side, my great-grandfather was a coal miner in western Pennsylvania. My grandfather was a shoemaker. Mom became a nurse, and she also spent her life helping others. My mom was the classic Italian. She would fall in love with you over the phone. And mom taught me that there was nothing more powerful than love, and that the nation we make has to be based on love. Mom grew up in a thriving middle-class town, Catanning, Pennsylvania. But once the coal mines closed and the steel plants shut down and the factories shut down, Armstrong County, Pennsylvania went into an economic tailspin that it hasn't gone out of in more than 30 years. We have to do much more to provide new opportunities for my family and for all families. My parents made tremendous sacrifices to provide me with a great education. They taught me that you can be anything you want to be in America as long as you work hard, get a great education, and believe in yourself and our country. They inspired me to do this work. But for too many of our young people today, the American dream has become a dream deferred. We all know the statistics, so I won't repeat them except for one, which frankly shocked me when I read it. For the first time in more than 50 years, a majority of the public school children in our country, in America, are living in poverty. Think about that, a majority of our kids. And what does that mean for the next generation? Are we willing to consign them to a future of diminished possibilities? Well, we're here today to say it doesn't have to be that way. We can build an opportunity nation for every single one of our children, regardless of the zip code they're born into. And they can achieve their dreams and contribute to that special journey of a more perfect union for all of us. Well, we face difficult days in our country and our communities. When I look at all of you and who you represent, I can't help but be hopeful. You're showing us the way. In this hall are people who are solving the tragedy of hungry and homeless children. In this hall are leaders who are ending the high school dropout crisis. In this hall are social entrepreneurs who are showing that we can lift kids out of poverty. In this hall are passionate advocates imploring us that we have to recognize that our 5.5 million opportunity youth are assets to be nourished, not problems to be ignored. In this hall are patriots who have enough faith in the next generation to say that a year of national service should become a rite of passage for all of our young people. And in this hall are amazing young people who are leading us to the future. Yes, let's hear it for the young people. All of us in this hall are dedicated to ensuring that America can fulfill its promise as an opportunity nation. What's powerful about our gathering and the growing Opportunity Nation Coalition is that we have come together out of our silos to embrace a bold bipartisan opportunity agenda. It sets 10-year goals for our country with concrete bipartisan solutions and ideas that can guide us forward. Building a true opportunity nation for our children, it's not rocket science. It's not nearly as hard as finding a cure for cancer or AIDS. We know what should be done, and we have your proven solutions to guide us on our path. Dr. Martin Luther King reminded us, we have the resources in this country. We have to find the will. Well, this summit and uniting as a coalition is about inspiring and mobilizing and calling on our fellow American community members and our political leaders 
to find that will. Critics say we can't end poverty in America because our politics are broken. But we can't just accept that. This is a country that inspires people from all over the world to risk everything and start anew. This is a country that more than 55 years ago decided to put a man on the moon in a decade and did it in record time. This is a country that invented the internet and cracked the human genome. The fight to reclaim America as an opportunity nation is the number one domestic policy issue facing our country today. We have to keep at it until we've achieved our goal. We have to challenge all of our candidates running for office for their ideas on how to make an opportunity nation. And most importantly, once this election is over, we have to we work even harder as a coalition to force our political leaders to put aside their partisan differences and come together on ideas we know that work. Today with this summit and our Opportunity Nation agenda, we begin that process. If you've already signed on to the agenda, and more than 120 organizations in our coalition have done that, thank you. If you haven't, we hope you will. We want to keep raising our voice collectively. Because we have to remember that all great change in this country has come from the grassroots, from citizen movements, from the citizen soldiers of our revolution, to the abolitionists, to the suffragists, to the trade unionists, to the civil rights activists, to the environmental activists and anti-war activists, for those who are pushing that all of the members in our LGBTQ community have full equality. It's always been we the people who have pushed this country forward. And now it's up to us to build a powerful opportunity movement such that every child gets the love and nourishment that they deserve and need. So let's seize this moment as Gandhi taught. Let's all be the change we seek in the world.